Thank you, Jim. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, I want you to know that uh, I'm here on a very happy occasion. Um, two of us have been very lucky in our lives to have, to have grown up in a place where golf was uh, played and nurtured. And uh, I know this, that uh, when I look out in the audience tonight, I'm so happy that, uh, uh, that, that uh, Tom's family is here. And I'll get to that in a minute. But uh, I can tell you the first time that I saw Tom Kite, uh, my brother and I were playing. I was uh, 11 years old, and, and my brother was 12. And uh, we went across the parking lot at the Austin Country Club and uh, went to the back nine, and I saw this fellow coming. Uh, and he said, you mind if, if I play the back nine with you? And uh, this fellow was, he, he, he had on slacks, and he had on a shirt and a, and a, and a hat, he had a big red bag with brand new Wilson staffs, and he had some, some etonic shoes that were just unbelievable. My brother and I were just couldn't believe it. We said, God, this is incredible. That was our first introduction to Tom. And Tom, we, we went out and, and played the back nine, and he took a swing at it. And I guarantee you, my brother and I, our eyes were about this big. And he said, God, this guy can play. He was from Dallas. His father came down. He was going to take over the job at the Internal Revenue Service there in Austin. And um, there I saw Tom for the first time and watched him play and saw some shots go out. And I said, wow, he can really play. And there it started, and it gave us an, uh, an indication of what was to come later on in our whole life. At that time, you know, our parents, our, my father was a lawyer and he played a lot of golf, and uh, Mr. Kite was a fine player, Mrs. Kite's a wonderful player. So we went about learning this game, and we happened to be learning under the best atmosphere that we could with Harvey Penick. He happened to know that Tom was, was very, very meticulous, and he wanted to get things right, and he was a real practicer. It was the first time that I ever saw a real practicer in my life. Tom is one of these people who doesn't leave anything to chance, and he, is, he has done such a great job of that, and I don't think there's anybody in our game who can really say that they have improved almost every year that they've played. Now, that's really hard in golf. Tom was a great player before, but to, but to try to add to his repertoire every time, he did such a great job. And it was very clear to many people, certainly in, in high school and then in college when we went to University of Texas and played together, that uh, you know, he, he was going to outwork everyone. He was really in the mold of a Hogan. Um, we shared so many uh, battles on the course. Uh, we were, I was so lucky that he was in the town. He pushed me and I pushed him. But all the while, Harvey was keeping a hand on us. He knew that I liked to play, so he just turned me out. He just said, you just go play and I'll go watch Tom practice if he wants to. And he practice, he did. You know, he kind of reminds me of... Uh, I thought about it earlier when, you know, they used to say at Johnny McDermott when he won the 1911 and 1912 U.S. Opens, and this guy was one of the first practicers. He would practice into a field with newspapers spread out in the field, and he'd get upset if the ball didn't stop on the right paragraph. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's the way Tom was, you know, and Harvey would, uh, would congratulate him about a certain shot that he did on the practice tee, and Tom would just shake his head. He said, no, we can do better. Well, all I can tell you is that growing, from the, growing up from the same town, I, we have a special pride in Austin that we were learning under, under the best. Harvey had a way of teaching everyone, as you know. He taught many of the women, Kathy Whitworth and Betsy Rawls and uh, Mickey Wright. And, and uh, there were so many people. But his pupils, every time that Tom did well, I felt a certain pride because he was doing it in his way and doing it the best way he could. Now, Tom 
All of his accolades, he won right over here at the TPC. He won many, many championships. We have about the same record, but I can tell you, I was not at the U.S. Open that he won. I was at home. I didn't qualify for the tournament. But uh, when I watched that unfold, and when I watched him handle those conditions, and uh, to to reach down inside of himself like he did, it was you know it was a day for pure instinct. You couldn't, you know, you had to throw mechanics out the window. You had to react that day. It was really gusty, and everybody was dropping strokes, but. How he won that tournament, it was in the best fashion possible. He relied on his instinct. That was his day, and, and I can tell you that Austin was absolutely ablaze and so happy for him. And it was entirely fitting that he won that tournament uh, on the most, one of the most beautiful courses in the world. And we were so happy for him. But each time that Tom wins, I do feel a special pride. Austin is, is, a, is a wonderful place to live. We are proud of Tom every time, and he's getting better. He's going to win more tournaments on the senior tour. He's always, and he's in the best shape he's ever been in his life. He is diligent, and he's going to make it right. I am proud to know him. Texas is proud of him. I'm so happy for your family. Christy, you've toiled. All the women all that uh, are here tonight that are behind their husbands, we could not accomplish things without you. We want to thank you. Mr. and Ms. Kite, so happy that you are here. And uh, Harvey is looking down on us, and he's very happy. Tom's been a close friend of mine for many years, and we played against each other, and we played on the same teams. And I think you'll be impressed with his accomplishments as, I will, as I've always been. Let's take a look at Tom's career. Tom Kite's record speaks for itself. If nothing else, his performance at Pebble Beach was pretty astounding, as well as outstanding. Tom was, uh, was tough to play against because you could never read him real well. He, he was pretty stoic uh, as far as his facial expressions. Uh, he had that little fist pump he'd do when he made a putt, you know, and that, and that great smile. He was a tenacious player. I still think Tom Kite, right now, is in the top 10 best strikers of a ball in the world. He's always been a good straight driver, sound driver, good iron player. But he made his short game really work for him. He's got a Hogan work ethic. There haven't been too many people who's outworked Tom Kite. He's always been a great uh, person as well as a, a great professional golfer. He's a winner. He's done it, he's played well, he's, his career has been punctuated by a long length of time of being a winner. <laughs> Elected on the PGA Tour ballot, please welcome the 103rd member of the World Golf Hall of Fame, my friend Tom Kite.